Ayn Rand said, the question isn't who is going to let me in, it's who's going to stop me. So once we're in the door and we start this climb up the rungs of the ladder, you know, what, what opposition do we potentially face climbing that ladder? So um, I'd like to invite Maya, if that's okay, to uh, talk a little bit about your experience or your thoughts uh, around this topic. Um, yeah, I'd love that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I think Jackie touched on, on some of it already in, in her previous answer. I think there is something to do with, um, uh, I guess, first of all, career aspirations um, sometimes, and I'm definitely guilty of that. I, I kind of, it's kind of follow the flow in my career. <laughs> I don't necessarily have a long-term plan where, um, oh, I want to be a director, but I don't know, age 45 or something. Um, but uh, I do know that that's a better approach, um, actually, when you have a little bit of a plan, even if it's not like for the next five years, but at least in this role, where do I want to take it? How do I want to go about it? What's the next step after that, right? Um, whether that's within the same company, whether that's actually if you just want to explore the field and go to more companies, right? So that's that's one thing I would say. Um, and then when when you're looking at a promotion, right? Because you're in the company, you're enjoying your role, you're ready for uh, more responsibilities and more money with that. Um, Another constraint uh, thing for women is how do you ask for a promotion? Again, Jackie kind of um, touched on that. Sometimes you need to be very clear about it. And also there is the component of timing around it. I think I've definitely been guilty in the past. And um, since I'm my friends guilty in the past, like postponing this conversation. Oh, it's just another month. Oh, maybe now is not the great time. Oh, maybe I'll do it after my holiday. Oh, after my manager's holiday. And <laughs> like another year goes by you haven't asked for that promotion, um, or you haven't even made it clear that you're even thinking about the promotion or that you're thinking about maybe switching up your job or just getting more responsibilities. And that just delays, that just delays yeah, your career progression essentially. So definitely have that conversation, even if it's just a preliminary, I'm thinking about it. What do I need to do in order to get there, right? You don't have to have these answers. Your manager and you will talk about this, right? That's why they're your manager, um, so they can help you um, develop. So that's another thing I would say. Um, and then again, what Jackie was saying, you know, some 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 of us are just afraid to be, um, you know, to be mean, <laughs> to be seen as, oh, I'm mean and I'm a manager now, and you know, I have to say no. And what if people don't like me? I can't be friends with uh, the employees, you know, that I'm managing. All of these things that kind of run in our heads, but. Um, you, you can, you can, do, the, there is actually no book on that. I mean, there are multiple books, but there's also no single book that is your way of managing people, right? Or your way of doing a job. That's up to you. So um, you can kind of make your own rules in a way about how you go about your job. So that's another thing I'll just say for people just to not be afraid to explore their own style. Um, family commitments, absolutely. Um, I think a few, few of us talked about that. Uh, I think Sheryl Sandberg talked about it in Lean In, where women just kind of sabotage themselves because they're like, oh, but I want to start a family. Maybe in the next two years, there is this promotion right now, but what does that mean? You know, if, if I want to start a family, I can't do it right now because I'm, I'm leaving the company on, but you're not leaving the company on. <laughs> you still, you're still will be doing your job. Um, so don't kind of don't delay it for yourself just because you have a thought, right? Um, so I'll definitely say that's another kind of big one. Um, and yeah, that's kind of as far as I've gotten it with my career. I haven't cracked the director level yet, so I don't necessarily have a tips on that. Um, but yeah, making it more clear uh, would be my first thing, actually, if, if I were to kind of go that route. Um, Jackie, I can see you nodding <laughs> quite frankly on this. <laughs> so, yes, absolutely. The patriarchy and misogyny is real. Okay, Let, let's be honest. And, um, you know, especially as a, a woman in tech and uh, a Black woman in tech, I've, I've experienced it many times. And the way you get through it is as a woman, right, is you create your tribe. 
Otherwise, um, if you're having to deal with gaslighting and microaggressions and conscious and unconscious bias every day, um, if you don't have that tribe, that circle of trusted friends, you know, family members um, that you can you, you can go to, right, when you're feeling these things. Um, I went through a time where uh, I felt alone and was just at a real low point because I thought it was me, right? I didn't realize that, you know, these organizations can have cultures that restrict women and restrict women getting ahead. So yes, it does happen. Um, and I spent way too much time trying to conform, thinking if I just act, showed up every day, um, trying to make those people who, or the culture, if I tried to conform to that culture, I would get ahead. And you cannot, right? And so that's why you need that tribe. That's why you need that support system. And then you have to start planning because um, your health, your mental health, your your future and your career is worth more than um, what that culture and that organization is doing to you every day. And there are organizations out there that will embrace you, right? There are cultures that are there to support women and help you get ahead. I think sometimes women because um sometimes i think oftentimes we do we we are more risk averse we, we we find it harder to leave or um take on the risk of trying another organization we'll stick it out and bear it but yes it's absolutely real right? <laughs> um and gaslighting and um you know cultures will keep women down and that's when you have to have a plan to, to find possibly an opportunity somewhere else. I, I, I'm going to be honest, that's how I've gotten ahead is by um, realizing I've hit that glass ceiling, right? And um, to look for opportunities elsewhere. Oftentimes that's that's how women do get ahead. Unfortunately, that that's the way it is, but know that it does happen. How do you find your tribe? Where do you go? You know, if you're the only one, like it, as Erin sort of pointed out, where do you go? What would you, do you have, does anyone have any sort of words of advice on that? I was going to say, when, when Jackie was saying about tribe, I was thinking I, I definitely build that tribe and I built it with men in my org. And I think that's how I made a lot of progress. So early on in my career, I was very stuck for a long time because I was comparing myself to the other men and I was less technical. I was less capable of doing incredible architectural designs than my peers were doing. And I, I kept comparing myself to them and my manager was comparing them, me to them, right? And telling me, oh, you know, for your next promotion, you really need to re-architect the world. And, and that was while I had taken on management and was already managing several people, which they didn't. But it was interesting, that comparison and that they set a bar that they all met and I was different. And it took building that tribe of discovering your allies within your network. And it doesn't necessarily have to be your manager. Like, one of the peers who I most compared myself to, who's an amazing engineer, we had all these conversations and I told him like, I'll never be you, right? Like he spends his weekends writing home automation projects. I don't, right? And I was like, that's, that's just not me. And he said, yeah, no, but you're the one who comes in and solves our team problems. And every time we have a problem, like you're the, and it took him recognizing me and having those conversations and repeating back to me what I was good at to really start building that confidence that I think managed I had to fight against my manager to get a promotion into management, um, which he was against, but at least like I had that support and I definitely have that tribe. And now over the years, I've built a huge tribe of all the people who are kind of peers to me. And it's maybe I'm the engineering manager, but I have a huge peer in my product team and my UX team, my developer relations team. And that really builds up that support where you're you may be the one different in your team, but you're the one who's providing a huge amount of value. And it took a while, but then my leadership started recognizing the huge value I bring because I bring something so different to everyone else in my org. Um, but it, it took a lot of tribe building and advocating. So I'm not gonna say that's necessarily the path I'd recommend to everyone. Like I, I admire people like Jackie who say, oh, just find a new opportunity. I've never been brave enough to do that step, right? And instead I fought this one path really strongly. Um, yeah, and, that's what we and, and to be clear, Clara, um, it doesn't have to be a new opportunity to, at a new company, right? It can be a new opportunity within your company, 
right? As you said, creating that tribe of others within your organization can create opportunities in other parts of your organization or advocates in the room when you're not in the room that can kind of counteract um, the issues you may be having with your immediate manager, right? If, if, if there are other voices besides your manager that can kind of counteract that, there's, there's, there's not much one voice can do. So yeah, I just want to clarify that. I uh, I love what you said, what you both said around the tribe, and um, part of the reason I felt really, really passionately about uh, the Women in Tech um, Network at News UK. Um, I, we had it when I started, but the two key women who were running it left very shortly after um, I joined the company. And I just thought, what a shame <laughs> to let all of these great efforts actually go to waste. So, I kind of stepped up and um, co-organized it uh, with one of uh, one of the other heads of, and it was exactly to tackle topics like that and to make sure that there is actually a community of women of women in technology. Because again, as in many companies, we are just fewer um, than the men. But what Clara was saying, it was very important that actually a lot of our meetings where we would discuss general topics like. How do you ask for a promotion? How do you ask for a higher salary? Things like that. The, these sessions would be open to the men as well, and especially to men managers. Um, what I struggled with um, was when um, I heard feedback on some of the people who I managed um, who were women, and I would hear feedback from uh, men colleagues, kind of um, not necessarily their direct managers because I was their direct managers, but kind of other colleagues who uh, were keen to provide feedback to me, and they would say, "Oh, they just lack confidence, right? That's what's um, that's what's stopping them. That's what's stopping them from being, you know, promoted or getting whatever uh, manager role or some some other leadership role." And I absolutely hate that comment. I absolutely, I just wanted to fight this comment and I wanted to fight it on kind of on the whole technology level within the company to say, actually, okay, fair enough. You, you think that's the feedback and that's kind of what you want to say to me, but why do you think that's a problem? Is it that every man who's gotten that role has that confidence? Um, and actually looking beyond that, well, how can, how can you help that particular person to feel like they can actually show more confidence? Because we all know this, although is, is a woman confident or is she kind of uh, too pushy, you know, the whole, the whole language um, component to it. So that's one thing organizationally that was kind of outside of my role that I was just felt very passionately about. And I just wanted to have that community for, for myself, of course, but also for all the women in technology in, in the company, just so that we can have this tribe and we can actually bounce ideas off each other. It's not necessarily your direct manager. Um, some other women who might be in your discipline, might be business analysts, might be product managers, might be engineers, doesn't matter. It's, <laughs> it's just a way for all of us to connect and talk about topics that are really important to us. I think that, that confident point is, it, I want to just share an anecdote because I think it's an interesting thing, but I chatted to somebody about a job once. They contacted me. Was I interested in going to work for their company? I spoke to a few people at the company, chatted to a, someone, it was a guy, but a guy joined the call. Um, I hadn't applied yet. I was trying to decide if I would want to. And someone joined the call late, said, I haven't checked your CV, uh, but I've heard that you're, you've applied for this job. So go on, tell me about yourself, sell yourself. And I was like, okay, just to clarify, I, I haven't applied for the job. This is me talking to you to see if I want to apply for the job. Um, but had a bit of a chat. And just towards the end of the call, he said to me, I'm going to be honest, of the people I've spoken to who are, have applied, again, haven't applied, but uh, have applied for the job, you are the quietest. You're um, not so, you, you don't come across as confidently as everybody else. Um so why do you think that you would be right for this job? Bearing in mind, I've done my job for 17 years successfully. I've got good experience. Thankfully, I was confident enough to say, well, I, I would prove it. I, I know I'm good at my job. I'll prove it to you. Here's all the evidence of why I'm good at it. But I thought it was really interesting. Something I've become much more aware of, even just over the last year, is how many people think that if you're quieter, if you're slightly more... I don't actually like necessarily think about like being introverted necessarily, but if you're a quieter person, you're slightly more measured, that that means you lack confidence. And I think sometimes it's 
it's a really important thing to to kind of call that out and and kind of say actually no, I can I can be confident and quiet um I I love that we have a new CEO and I love that she is a she's a quiet person she is not a loud gonna walk into the room tell everybody what to do she's measured she listens and um I found it brilliant when she was given the role because it it was that kind of reminder to me that you don't have to be a certain person to get to a certain position and 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 you can stay true to yourself you have to kind of work through that and work out how to be confident in yourself but I thought it was a it's it that into not interview that conversation was incredibly frustrating but it was a good reminder of well hold on I can I can be good without having to ram it down everyone's throats and tell them I guess so it's slightly off topic but it made me think of it with confidence 